This link will allow you to access the documentation publicly. These are all the different categories of REST APIs, right? Snap Mirror, NAS, Storage, each of these is a category. So let's start with the documentation. This is the documentation specific to REST. So what HTTP methods are supported? We have looked at get, post, patch, and delete. What kind of codes are written? Right? What are the supported HTTP status code? Information around that. If you want to know how do you limit the records, right? The timeout. So how much time you want to wait before it retrieves that list of records? And how do you paginate all this information relevant to REST API? We have it under documentation, right? And when we expand the networking category, these are all the network endpoints. So let's try it out. So if you have to try it out, you need, you need a system. In this case, I'm using the lab on demand. This lab is accessible to customers as well. That's the unique point here, right? To, for us to try out um, a few endpoints, what we do is we use our credentials first. We authorize our calls. So every any call you make on the Swagger interface, it's actually going to the cluster, right? First, let's try to retrieve a list of volumes. That's the simplest one, right? What do you do? You hit on this try it out. Once you hit on try it out, let's try to retrieve the list of volumes on a specific storage virtual machine. My storage virtual machine is SVM21. And then once you hit execute, it gives you what was the curl output, what is the curl output, and what is the HTTPS request which was used to retrieve this information and the response. In the response, you can see that it's retrieved you the name of a volume and then what is the UUID for this particular volume. By default, it gives you the volume and the UUID name. You can download the JSON output. If you hit download, it kind of downloads it to your machine, right? Since it's an authorized curl output, you can actually copy it and then run it from a machine. And in this instance, I'm running it from, a, from my RHEL instance. When you run it, since it's an authorized call, you get the same response. Right? So let's take it a step further. You can actually add what fields you need. So let's add size. In addition to size, I also want, in addition to name, I also want the size of the volume. And then you can also say by what field you want it to be ordered by. So let's order it by size. Once you hit execute, it shows you what is the curl output and what are the URL and what's the response. Right. In the response, you can see that it's ordered it by size. Right. It's in the ascending order here. Okay. So you can define what parameters you want to fetch and how do you want to sort it. So the next example, let's see how do we create a volume. To create a volume, we would use the post storage volumes. We kind of help you understand what are the required properties, what are the optional properties. And we also have an example, an example which says for every field, what are the attributes available, right? And we also have a model. This model is very important. This model helps you understand the different fields and as part of every field, whether it's an optional or a required field, and what are the parameters supported for that field? Right. So the try it out will help you run this command. So once you hit try it out, the example value changes to edit value. So what are we trying to do here? We're trying to create a volume. To create a volume, let's use the minimum needed parameters. So what are the minimum needed parameters? It's the aggregate name, the name of the volume, the path, and the storage virtual machine. Right. I'm just copying it and pasting it here. And this is where you would, if you use the HAL plus JSON, it would give you a referenceable link as well, right? 
So once you hit execute, this is the curl output. Okay, and what you find here as part of the response is it's given you a job UUID. So creating, modifying, and deleting, these are asynchronous calls. For asynchronous calls on TypeRest API, kind of generates a job UUID. You would actually go and check on the job to, to see if the call what you did was a success or a failure. In this case, our volume was created successfully. That's what the job UUID returns. Okay. So this was a brief demonstration on how you can access the uh, Swagger documentation interface, how you can actually run it from a system and try out a few commands.